Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for allowing for me to present to you this afternoon um, an update on our first quarter um, human resources dashboard. Um, as I report out, um, as we look at the dashboard, um, our focus is um, for the annual incentive plan is on volunteer turnover. So when you do review the dashboard uh, for the first quarter, uh, we did end the first quarter at 14.39 with a close from um, FY18 of 13.06. Uh, so for us, we um, did score a little bit higher than what we did uh, for the end of FY18, but of course, uh, there are several projects and work around uh, focusing on the uh, total and voluntary turnover uh, for this year. Of course, Bill will be coming up to focus and uh, discuss the AIP metrics, but that is an area of focus uh, for us. Uh, so I wanted to provide a report out um, on the turnover. I uh, just wanted to ask, are there any questions relating to the first quarter uh, report out? No, there are no questions okay. on, the, on the report. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. I think... Next, I have Bill. Do you want to <clears throat> uh, come up and do the annual and the long term? <laughs> okay. Any questions? <laughs> Doesn't hurt to try. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to try. Okay. So, my purpose today is to review with you the um, metrics and the performance uh, first quarter for the annual incentive plan and the long term incentive plan. And just to jump right in there, we have uh, quality. As you might recall from earlier discussions, the patient safety um, index of PSI 90 consists of 10 indicators, it's a composite measure. And one is right where we really want to be all of the time. Anything above one is not considered positive. Anything below one is even better than one. So one's kind of normalized given the uh, patients that we care for. <clears throat> so for the first quarter, we, we have some opportunities, as you see. We're not exactly where we want to be. We've got, um, and each one of these indicators, too, are weighted differently. Just know that, depending on the severity of some of these indicators that are being monitored and measured. So we have three that really are above where we want them to be at the end of the first quarter. One is perioperative hemorrhage and hematoma. Uh, that's a 7% weight. The other is post-op respiratory failure. That's a 30.5% weight. And the last one that we're a little above target is the periop PE and DVT, pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis indicator. So it doesn't take many patients to really uh, skew this rate, if you will, because there's not a lot of, uh, the, the denominator is not large. But we do have some work and we do have some plans that we have developed and we're now in the process of aligning those service lines within a claim to the overall uh, opportunity and the plan that we have as an organization going forward. So we will bring back better news for you at the next time we bring this forward. Bill, how did, how did those uh, particular areas get weighted so heavily? It's that is based part on a reaction of the to what? Black box formula. And I, I don't know. And Tricia, do you know Tricia's the answer there. to that? It's, probably, it's a great question. And there, there is a rationale for why the weights are different. Yes. Good afternoon. So the weights for the PSI 90 metric components are assigned by the severity of harm 
for which they cause to patients, as well as the cost implications, and then the prevalence of these particular events across the country. So the weights shift from year to year based upon the activity that is being observed in patient care. So the, they're the same weights for all hospitals, uh, tracking the same measures? Yeah. Oh, Correct. It's a national we measure. Don't, we don't set those okay. weights. Right. Those weights are set by standards um, that are not any of our control or any other hospital's control. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Next metric that we're measuring is service, uh, HCAPs and patient experience in the outpatient realm. So HCAPs, we changed the definition a little bit in terms of how we're going to measure that this year. And there is an overall national rate of improvement for every dimension within the HCAP survey. There are 10 dimensions. And this, again, is a national comparison. So based on all of the inputs from the organizations through HCAP's measurement, there is a rate of improvement that everyone is experiencing. Some dimensions improve faster than others. Our goal this year is for three, five, and eight dimensions to improve equal to or greater than the national rate of improvement. Instead of just looking at percentile ranking or mean score, we want to focus on the dimensions that are improving. So for the first quarter, for HCAPs, three of those dimensions either equaled or they were greater than the national rate of improvement for those same dimensions. Patient experience, we don't have the same um, ability to compare ourselves to others in this respect. So we have carved out primary care, specialty care, and women's health, have 10 questions that we're asking all of our patients within those clinics, and we have established a point three as a rate of improvement for each one of those questions. So much like HCAPs, where there's a national rate of improvement, and some of those national rates of improvement are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, we have said 0.3 is gonna be our rate of improvement for every question in the outpatient realm. Okay. So you can see we had the same performance um, targets, threshold target stretch, 358 as the HCAPs, and through the first quarter, seven of those questions in primary, specialty, and women's health have improved by 0.3 or greater over last year. So that's all positive. People, uh, Pia just discussed voluntary turnover with you. There are 11 more individuals, employees who have resigned this first quarter than last year at the same time. And that makes up the difference between what we experienced last year, which I think was around 12%, and where we are this year at 14.39. We know the areas that we've experienced a higher voluntary turnover, and we're working uh, with those areas to develop action plans, but it, it's all about, not all about, but a great part of that is recruitment, is finding the right people for the right place and the right time and the right job. The other two metrics that we're tracking is employee engagement and physician engagement. There are, act, there are action plans around each one of those uh, performance indicators, and there's only a one-time opportunity every year to actually score your performance, and that's September of uh, 2019. So you can see what we did last year, 4.37, 3.89, and what our performance expectations are for the, the fiscal year 18. Stewardship, um, we've established uh, two metrics. One that Sharon uh, spoke to you about <coughs> when these were approved, modified costs per adjusted admission. It is net of certain expenses that we cannot control or influence directly. That, that is what we want to be in terms of fair to our frontline and our managers. You can see there's two there. One, one metric is for uh, VPs and above and the other is for directors and below. So modified cost per admission is something that we've challenged our leadership team, directors and below, to achieve. And that's net of those expenses we can't control or influence. Um, we know what that number is year to date, but there's a lot of things that are coming online 
in the future, like next month or month after next, things that we budgeted for and planned for, that's going to skew this number a bit. We experienced that same thing last year. So if you put that number out, which is favorable right now, it's, it's around the target area, you put that number out too early, there might be a tendency to kind of think we're doing really well when we might not be. So we want to focus on that and keep it uh, something that we bring uh, periodically, not every month, but, but periodically as we incur some of the expenses that we anticipate or that we don't anticipate. The other indicator uh, is something that we cha challenged the leadership team with last year, which was the operating margin, net operating margin. And based on those of you who were in the finance meeting this morning, the first quarter is doing, has done quite well. We've, we have done quite well as an organization. And that fiscal year to date through December is 1.59% net operating margin, which exceeds uh, all of the other performance outcome targets. Um, and that's the annual incentive plan metrics, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that anyone might have about that. Yes. Bill, on the service metric. Uh, yes, sir. When talking about the 10 questions that we ask, is that just simply based on the care that the providers give, or is it their entire experience from time to get an appointment through seeing the, seeing the provider and then paying and checking out? On, on the outpatient, yes. the 10 questions, yeah. I have someone behind me that will be happy to answer those questions. That's her. Sure. Hi. Hi. Um, so it actually does encompass the entire visit. Okay. So there is a large bulk of the questions that re revolve specifically around the provider, but then there are also questions that are from the receptionist piece, which we're actually alternating from um, ease of getting an appointment. When you Did you make a phone call to make the appointment, and what was the ease of that, as well as um, when they checked in? Okay. So it goes through the Yeah, I just gamut. wanted to make sure if it, it yeah. covered the whole spectrum of care, not just the the provider piece. Yes, and I'm actually bringing the, all of the questions and dimensions with me to quality. Oh, okay. So we'll review okay. all of those together as well. So, but thank you for the question. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. 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 Um, moving to the long-term incentive plan. Uh, you, you've seen this before. These are our two metrics that we're tracking. Uh, one is leapfrog, which we think is extremely important. It, it consists of 30 some odd indicators. Um, a, a component, a significant component of leapfrog is PSI 90, which I just reviewed with you. It's less than 20%, but still it is something that we truly need to focus on if we're going to maintain our overall uh, letter grade of D and improve upon that. So the other metric is cost per adjusted patient admission, which we just reviewed in the annual incentive plan, except this is what leadership is responsible for in the long term, and the directors and below are responsible for that in the annual plan. So same answer there. We, we do have a number, but it's really too early to post that and have any degree of confidence about its ability to, to maintain that level. Yeah. Be happy to, and the leapfrog score, we'll have one in April, and then one again in November, again for the year ending, fiscal year ending September 30th. So a little, little soon for that yet. Okay. Bill, help me remember the cost per adjusted patient admission. Being the definition? Bill, between target and stretch, when you go from 13.2 to 13.214. 13291 to 13242 to 13214. Mm -hmm. What the. No, the question should be US 3077. 12,000. We went up. We went up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not attracted. Um, so the difference between our, our threshold represents budgeted expenses and budgeted admissions. The target, I believe, is a $3 million savings, and the stretch is a $5 million savings from budget. Okay. Um, and we did go up from baseline to budget threshold because of the natural inflationary impacts that we, we have. You know, salaries 
go up three, three and a half percent every year. And pharmacy, I knew that. And, and pharmacy is an enormous expense increase. Thanks. You bet. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank okay. You. We'll bring this back next time we meet. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the what I need to do now is for us to uh, go into executive session uh, because I have some uh, information that I need to share with the board. So Could I don't you, have. Would you mind if I went in to sit down with this post? I did my portion of the post first yeah. and then everybody else come back in. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do, this closed session is going to cause um, everybody except Mr. Whitman to leave the room, and that will literally take five minutes. And then we'll ask those of you, Tia and Steve, to come back in regarding the finance part of it, if y'all don't mind. Yeah, you need to find something. Yeah, sorry. Because we do have.